Hello guys and welcome to another video looking at the ADJ Focus Bot series. Now I've done my individual reviews of each of the fixtures in the series. We have the Focus Bot 1, the Focus Bot 2 and the Focus Bot 3Z. And now I'm going to compare the fixtures together, tell you what the differences are, what the similarities are and which is my favourite out of the three. So let's start off by looking at the physical layout of the fixtures and their design. Well, the Focus Bot 1 and Focus Bot 2 are pretty much identical. They have the same base, the same connections, the same display. The only real difference is the head is slightly bigger on the Focus Bot 2, and that's of course to accommodate the extra features inside. The design between the two of them is pretty much identical. The Focus Bot 3, however, is a completely different animal. We've got a completely different design of base and a different design of head. The unit is, as you can see, much larger, and that's to accommodate all of the extra features you have inside. However, it's mostly the same in terms of things like connections. You've got exactly the same connections on the back as you do with the other focus bots, and it's the same digital display on the front. In terms of the power of the LEDs inside, well, our focus bot 1 here has a 35 watt LED. The focus bot 2 has a 75 watt LED, and the focus bot 3Z has a 100 watt LED. So with all three of them on here, you can see the differences in brightness. The focus bot 1 is definitely the least bright. But the Focus Bot 2 actually comes very close to the Focus Bot 3Z in terms of brightness, and that's because there's only a deficit of 25 watts of LED. And they have to remember, of course, that a wattage of LED doesn't actually account for lumens of output. It all depends on the efficiency of the, the diode itself and the optics inside the light. However, in terms of the actual real world output, the Focus Bot 2 does come close considering the size difference and that power difference. Now in terms of the features inside, the Focus Bot 1 is of course the most basic, it's only got a colour wheel and a gobo wheel, whereas the Focus Bot 2 and 3 have got other toys inside. So starting off with colours, there are differences between the three units. I'm going to scroll through each wheel of the eight colours inside each light, and you'll see the Focus Bot 1 and 2 remain mostly the same, however the Focus Bot 3 has an entirely different colour wheel inside. Which means if we're going to use the lights together, as unlikely as that may be, there's going to be differences. You can also see, however, that there are differences on the colour wheel between the Focus Bot 1 and the Focus Bot 2, which I find slightly odd. The first set of colours are mostly the same, but then slot number 6 and 7 don't match up. In terms of the gobos as well, if I spin the lights around here, we actually have a different gobo output. I'm just going to dim the lights down here so you can more clearly see the gobos with the exposure of the camera. So if I put the gobos into scroll mode, you can see we've actually got different gobos across all of the fixtures. Now with the Focus Bot 1 and 2, some of the gobos are the same, however they're not in the same order across both lights, which I find a little bit odd. I mean, you can see it as an advantage. If you've got some Focus Bot 1s and some Focus Bot 2s in your lighting rig, you're able to get a different effect from each unit. However, if you want to try and use them together to create the same effect or use them all in unison, then you're not going to be able to match up the gobos as easily. Though, however, of course, you can swap out the gobos in the fixtures if you wanted to have identical loadouts between both lights. And another difference with the 3Z in terms of its gobo loadout is it's got two gobo wheels. It has a rotating and indexable gobo wheel along with a static gobo wheel. But if you do want to change the gobos on any of these lights, the Focus Bot 1 and Focus Bot 2 are very easy to do. As I explained in my review videos, it's a single Phillips screwdriver to lift up the top of the head to simply slot in a new gobo. However, with the Focus Bot 3Z, it's not quite as easy. You need to dismantle the unit itself to get into the light to swap the gobo. After colour and gobo, we've of course got prisms. Now, the Focus Bot 1 doesn't have a prism, but the Focus Bot 2 does have a single six facet circular prism. The only thing about it is it doesn't rotate. So, if you want to get that aero rotating effect, you need to rotate the gobo instead of the prism. The Focus Bot 3 has all of the bells and whistles. So, we have a six facet circular prism along with a six facet linear prism. However, they're both on the same wheel inside the fixture, so you can't use them at the same time. Now, being part of the Focus Bot series means that all of these lights have motorized focus, so I can go ahead and remotely sharpen up that focus to focus in on our gobo wheel here. Now, the Focus Bot 3Z has one little trick that the others don't, and that is zoom. There is a reason there is a Z in the title, or a Z, depending on where you come from. Um, we can manually control that zoom, to zoom down the fixture to a small spot or slightly wider. The zoom range itself isn't actually that wide and in my opinion isn't especially useful because you can only zoom around five degrees difference between furthest zoomed out and tightest zoomed in. 
Now if I spin the lights back around for you and turn them back up to full brightness, one other thing that we can show you is the UV LED. Now the Focusbot 1 and Focusbot 2 both have a UV LED built into the front of the light. Now it is only a 3 watt LED which means that it's not going to be very bright. It will have some effect in smaller venues but if you go to anything slightly bigger you're not really going to see the advantage of having it. And that's why the Focusbot 3Z does not include a UV LED because it's working in larger spaces, larger venues which a small UV LED is going to do pretty much nothing. And one thing all these units have is very precise and very fast pan and tilt motors. So all these units have 16-bit pan and tilt control so you can get really fine-tuned adjustments of where your fixture is pointing. And also the fixtures are really fast so I can apply a very fast pan and tilt circle. This is as fast as it'll go on the Airstream bridge and you can see the lights are able to keep up and create that circle effect. So that's a look at all the different features across the three different lights and how they compare. But what do I actually think of them and which one do I think comes out on top? Well, starting with the Focusbot 1, it's kind of the most basic in the range. It's a simple moving head with only a colour wheel and a gobo wheel inside. If you're looking at buying a Focusbot 1, I would see if you could get that extra money to buy a Focusbot 2. And that's for two main reasons. First of all, the Focusbot 2 has a six facet prism which makes it much more versatile in terms of doing things like wide gobo washes and uh, creating some nice aerial effects. But the main reason is the difference in LED brightness, which you can see here on camera. The Focusbot 1 has that 35 watt LED, but the Focusbot 2 jumps right up to 75 watts of power and it has a much brighter output, which makes it much more versatile for using in not just small spaces, but much larger ones as well. So if you're looking at the Focusbot 1, try and spend that extra money and get the Focusbot 2. I think it hits the sweet spot between price versus performance. Now if you're looking for something much more high-end, the Focusbot 3Z does have those nice additional features with the multiple prisms and the multiple gobo wheels. However, can you justify that extra price of £850 per unit? One thing that I don't think is worth the money on the Focusbot 3Z is the zoom. If I'm honest, that zoom has such a narrow window of range that it's not actually very useful. It's not good for if you want to zoom down to a tight beam or zoom out to a wide wash. It's such a narrow window that effectively all you can really do is make your gobo or your spot slightly bigger and smaller. So the Z in zoom isn't particularly worth the money, but if you want something that is bright and high end, the 3Z is the answer. However, I still think the Focusbot 2 hits that sweet spot of price versus performance. You get that really bright LED source, you get the separate colour and gobo wheel, and you get a six facet prism. It's got all the features you really need for a moving head unit, and it comes in at a great price of only around £550. All three units here are great fixtures and I can highly recommend all of them. However, if you were to ask me which one would I buy, I would go for the Focusbot 2. So there you have it, that's a look at the differences between the Focusbot series of moving heads from ADJ. If you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.